learning about storing char values. So how do char values get represented in binary? Well, we know that char is short for character. So we're talking about single characters here. And we know that in Java, a char value is usually represented with a single quote mark. So for example, you will see a single quote mark A, and then a single quote mark. That shows that we're storing a char, as opposed to if we saw a double quote mark, which would imply that they were getting stored as a string. So we're talking about this type here, if we're storing a single character value, how does it get stored in a computer when computers can really only store zeros and ones, which we know about? We've talked about that for a long time. So every single character needs to get stored as a series of zeros and ones. So for example, something that looks like this would correspond to the letter A. But how do we know that each code corresponds to the letter that it needs to across different languages, across different computing platforms. And the answer is that we need some sort of commonality, some sort of system. Uh, and so the system that we're going to be looking at today is something called the ASCII system, ASCII, -I, uh, which uses seven bits to allocate to basically store information in a table. Let's have a look at the ASCII table now. So this is an ASCII table, and it's provided to every student on the back of their information booklet. For each letter, if we have a look at one particular example, we are given the decimal value of a character, we are given the char value of the character, and the binary value. And so in this case, we can see that 01100001 corresponds to the lowercase letter A. There's a lot of other information in this ASCII table too. You don't have to worry about all of these characters that don't really make much sense in terms of a single value. Um, but the ones that you're going to need to worry about in this course are the ones that start from decimal value 32. And what you'll see if we have a look at all of these values starting from after 32, going down that column, but also into the next column and the next ones, is that we've got all the capital letters represented, all the lowercase letters represented, all the digits, as well as all the most common punctuation marks. So for example, the exclamation mark uh, and the percentage symbol, as well as a whole bunch of other sort of punctuation marks. So if you're provided with an ASCII code and you need to convert it into a char or vice versa, it's really as simple as just looking it up on the table. For example, a test question might ask you, what is 01000101 in ASCII? In which case you just take that eight digit code and look it up on the ASCII table and find out that it is equal to a capital E. And you might need to go the other way. Now it's important to note that since we're storing a code that could also be a number, number operations work on chars as well. For example, in Java, you might quite easily see the line char x equals the character capital A. And then I could ask it to do increment by one. After doing these two lines, x is going to be equal to the character B. So we can do number operations, and by that I mean x++ plus plus is an example of a number operation, but we could also do multiplication or division or any other sort of operation. On a char, it'll basically do that operation on the numerical equivalent of that letter and give you that output. A more complex example of this is provided in the textbook notes on page 12. We can see this block of text here does something similar to the example previously, but it's an, in a more complex situation. We've got two variables here. One of them is x, which is given the value of capital A. Another one of them is y, which is given the value of lowercase a. Over here, we've got the output in terms of the first value and the second value on each line. And while we're in this loop here, we can see that the first value, the x, is incrementing by three each time. That's the one that's going a, d, g, j, m. That's skipping two letters each time and incrementing by three. And what's happening with our second value here is it's decreasing by two each time. Well, what's less than a? If you have a look at the ASCII table, it's clearly going back through some punctuation marks before it gets to the end of the alphabet and gets to capital Y. It then continues to decrease until we get to this point 
uh, where our one value is less than the other and that ceased to be the case so we exit out of the while loop. Now you might have noticed that all the ASCII characters on the ASCII table have a zero first. Now that means that ASCII can actually be represented using seven bits but using this table the 8-bit representation is assumed as well. It doesn't really matter in a test or an exam situation if it's using 7 bits or 8 bit. Uh, a question will be explicit, or if the question is not explicit, then you just need to pick one and be explicit with what choice you, you, you're using. So it doesn't matter if you choose ASCII to be an 8-bit system or a 7-bit system. You might also be interested to know that Java doesn't actually use ASCII. Unicode is the character system that Java uses, which allows for more information. What I mean by that is more characters can be included, and so we can have accents and various other things. So you'll notice if you have a look at the ASCII code on the back of your booklet that there's no accents for other languages. You don't get the E. Whoops, that was a bad E. You don't get the... You don't get an E with an accent over it, or an O with umlauts, or any other system from another language. Um, it's strictly for the 26 English letters uh, and their capital equivalents, as well as some punctuation. So that's a fairly big limitation, which means Java uses a much larger character set, and that's code, called Unicode. But for our purposes, studying ASCII is still very important because it allows us to work with a simpler system that can be fairly easily understood and you can have test questions or exam questions about. All right, I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to let you tackle the three questions for understanding on page 12 of the textbook. Do make sure you read through the examples provided. Uh, and when you're ready, we'll move on to the next topic in this unit.